We're on part one now of chapter 19, the cardiovascular system of blood vessels. Okay, so we're going to study blood vessels, and we're going to pick it up specifically on page 694. We're going to begin with this visual right here, which will then pertain to the artistic rendition here of what is an artery and what are its parts. This, of course, leads to a capillary system the front end of which is um, somewhat higher in pressure and uh, has lots of nutrients which then go out into the uh, internal uh, interstitial fluids and cellular uh, areas here where the cells utilize the nutrients as substrates for metabolism and doing what it is that cells do. They of course have waste products from that metabolism then gets taken up in the venous side low pressure system here which then goes up into the uh, venous side. All of this is powered by the heart of course. Um, at least on this side it's powered by the heart. On this side it's more or less powered by movement actually more than um, the blood pressure of the heart. But at any rate the point of this uh, little uh, presentation is that we need to um, nourish and clean uh, our 40 to 50 trillion cells. This is my idea of sort of Meals on Wheels um, in which our cellular life is mostly in situ. This is the 3% um, of the body fluid that, uh, or is it 5%, somewhere through there. Actually, it's about 3% of the body fluid actually is um, in a three, out, a 3 over 40. What's that? Oh, that is 5%, right? 3 liters out, uh, out of 40 liters um, approximately if you're a male, a little bit less if you're a female, but it's the percentage-wise that's important. It's the 5% of the fluid volume of the body is in the blood, and it's the fluid tissue of our body that gets uh, out here and uh, nourishes the cells and then also cleans them up, that is to say removes the wastes. And uh, so that's what is at issue here. Um, another aspect of what is at issue is uh, depicted for our viewing pleasure here. Here is an artery and a sister vein. They usually travel as sister uh, structures. And this is an important detail because check out the difference between these two it is quite profound. For one thing, the lumen of the, art of the artery here is uh, surrounded by this thick wall which resists pressure. With no blood in the artery, you can see that there is an elastic uh, lamina region that actually is puckered in this in this case. Let's have a, a close look at the pucker. So you can actually, this is an actual photomicrograph and you can actually see this sort of like, sort of, I don't know how to describe it, as sort of like the rubber band, as it were, of the lamina, uh, elastic lamina that's sort of like pulled tight. Under normal conditions, this would not appear this way, of course, because there's pressure pushing this open. Okay, but you can also see that there is very little in the way of lumen, even when it is fully extended. Okay, whereas if you were to compare what's going on here, here's a low-pressure system uh, structure, and the uh, walls are very, how shall I say, flimsy, to say the least. Also, it is so low-pressure that when somebody took a section of tissue, they in, they got to include red blood cells in this section. So the blood cells had not yet moved out of uh, the area here, whereas of course here we're under huge pressure. There's no red blood cells in there. Over here we have lots of red blood cells. Also if you check out the lumen comparison, this lumen with this lumen, you'll see that this is more than 50 per this is more than 100 percent bigger uh, it's more than twice or three times the size right and so the uh the notion here is that at rest when we're not having a huge amount of blood flow due to exercise but we're at rest this is where the blood is um how shall i say stored uh that is the reservoir of blood is the venous system okay this is an important detail and we'll come back to it from time to time Okay, so then um, now let's pick up the action here with our uh, diagram, the artistic rendition of what is an artery. And we'll begin with the um, 
at the top of the page here, they, they begin with the most interior feature, which is the tunica intima. Notice that we have three layers that they're going to reference here, the tunica intima, uh, the tunica media, and the tunica externa. Okay, so the tunica interna, I'm asking you to understand as a combination of the endothelium, which is the simple squamous epithelial lining. So right in here, wherever red blood cells uh, visit uh, and they look at the walls of the lumen here, whether it's in the heart or whether it's in the arteries, capillaries, or veins, they are always going to see simple squamous epithelium. And we're not going to call it simple squamous epithelium, no. Uh, we're going to be specific in our anatomy uh, nomenclature here. We're going to be calling it endothelium. Okay, so, but it basically, endothelium means simple squamous epithelium. And then there is a, um, a sub-endothelial um, layer, which in this case is loose CT. This is um, going to play a role, actually, when we get out to the capillaries, but I'll I'll reserve that for the moment, and we'll also include in this chapter a uh, a little workup of the um, cardiovascular diapatology um, online journal, which is um, part of PubMed Central, which means all of the papers are available and free to view. I have two review uh, papers that I need people to understand. They're very basic, They uh, and they tell us a lot. Uh, about how this whole system works, and so I want people to understand it because diabetics are truly people who are testing the system, as it were, type 1 and type 2 diabetics. Okay, so we saw this is the tunica intima. Then um, UC, uh, University of California, University of Texas, Massachusetts, New York, all want us to understand, for whatever reason, that the internal elastic lamina or membrane here, we usually call it lamina, is um, uh, unique and separate. So they just want us to understand that this is something in between the two tunics. Okay, this is purely a nomenclature issue. So then we have tunica media. We have a smooth muscle and elastic fibers of various uh, combinations of percentages. Okay, so there's some, uh, the closer you get to the um, aorta at the beginning, uh, the more you have elastic. And the further you get away from the aorta onto the more distal arterial system, uh, the less elastic you have and the more smooth muscle is um, the main component here. Uh, we do in some cases of very large arteries, especially toward the beginning of the system, we have some uh, external uh, elastic lamina, but mostly right in through here, we have this middle area here, the tunica media, which has um, got a lot of smooth muscle. Um, this is the area that could become overgrown, uh, shall we say, in um, arterial systems uh, at the arteriole level. We'll get into that. The arteriole is this next level of um, uh, vessel after we are at the artery. But this is the part that, shall we say, uh, can become thicker and overgrown. Uh, with increased levels uh, of blood pressure over periods of time. So primary hypertension will be one of the side effects that we're looking at here, a clinical correlation. Finally, we get the um, uh, tunica externa out here, which is largely um, an area that has uh, some dense, it has a lot of dense uh, irregular connective tissue uh, surrounding some, uh, shall we say, potentially uh, loose connective tissue, but there's some sort of loose connective tissue giving way to dense irregular. And there's also what's called here the vasa vasorum. Uh, vasa vasorum is commonly found uh, serving structures. Okay, so the blood vessel itself in this case does not uh, acquire nutrients and oxygen from its lumen. Instead, the cells of this structure acquire nutrients and oxygen from their own uh, perfusive uh, pathways of little tiny arteries and veins. Okay, so then we'll uh, we'll pick up the uh, next stage of this. This is going to give way to an art arteriole, which is much smaller, but similar in some ways. And I'll pick that up in the next section here.